Lee Steinway that uh, this last year we have restored. It is a, a pretty complete job for us. It has a new soundboard, new bridge caps, new, you know, all the structural stuff is new. I do have uh, these, these plate mounting bolts that I was talking about earlier I used on this piano. Um, with some trepidation, because this is, this is a, you know, a historic, in my opinion, this is kind of a historically significant kind of piano, and you, you want to always do your best, and et cetera. Um, but I, I, I felt that the advantages of these bolts were good, uh, so I, I used those. It has, it has the stainless steel bridge pins. Um, I was able to get this, uh, this is one of the brass decals that Steinway uh, has for their historic series pianos. Is that a new thing? Well, because they were stencil before, right? Right, right. Uh, uh, but well, Steinway some years back came up with this uh, historic. In fact, they they do more or less duplicate this <coughs> Lee Meyer and music rack design, and I think that piano sold for like one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars or something. So, um, anyway, but but this this uh, this was available through the Steinway uh, parts department. I prefer to use these brass decals if they're available, but of course they're not available for too many pianos. Who's the piano for? Um, it, it is owned by uh, Dr. J. Nan Wilson, who is just retiring as a piano professor at Texas Tech University in Lubbock. And she's owned this piano since the 60s. She bought it as a used piano. And, um, it, was, it was somewhat rebuilt like in 1965 and refinished. Um, the, 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 she bought it from a, a piano store in Lubbock in the 60s, and they were they were they had bought it. They were going to rebuild it on speculation, but they were going to paint it white and do, and do gold accents. Uh, this this is a to me one of the cosmetically one of one of the unique things about this piano is that it has this this uh, uh, curly figure mahogany, and so this is the same grain figure that you will see in like the whole violin maple, maple is the wood that you most often see curly maple, but this this is a mahogany that is a very curly figure and. You know, it's just it's just an amazing veneer. This uh, the finish that we put on here is um, is a, a, an open pour finish, and it's essentially an oil finish that has a little bit of a vinyl sealer and a little bit of lacquer on top, and then it's waxed. And so, uh, uh, but this this finish I like. Uh, it's it's for one thing, it's easy to live with, um, and, and it really I think does the most to really enhance. If you if you have some grain that's really pretty and really interesting. It doesn't muddy it up in any way. It, it keeps the, you can appreciate the grain for, the, exactly. for what it is. Is this the water locks? This is water locks. Mm -hmm. You say it's it vinyl? Uh, I, well, I put the water locks. There's two or three coats of the water locks oil, and then what coloring I did? I had a very thin uh, vinyl sealer that I mixed my color with, and then it has just a, a nitrocellulose lacquer with a little bit more color shading. Now. Uh, one one thing about a piano like this, you, you you notice the leg. It has these these legs that are carved, and it has the lyre, and you notice it has a bench, an artist bench that matches, and this piano even has caster cups that match. Oh, wow. mm. And so uh, this is this is what you call faux grain. I I, I undertook to uh, to match to match the grain uh, uh, color and grain movement on these legs. <coughs> so there's a lot of parts that are not ma the mahogany. And this is a normal thing for Steinway pianos because like, like that 1918 Model O, if that was a mahogany piano, well, all the main surfaces would have been mahogany veneer, but the legs and wire would have still been maple. And so even if it's not an ornamental leg like this, uh, there were a lot of those uh, late 19th century and early 20th century pianos that they would use a different width for the legs, or, or there would be maybe random case parts, like the lid prop, maybe. So if, if, if somebody who does a lot of uh, case restoration on old pianos, you have to come up with some way to get the colors to blend. And uh, in fact, uh, to add insult to injury, my customer wanted a couple of sheet music cabinets, which are back there, which came from the Jansen Company. Uh -huh. And to make it even more awful, I ordered one and got it finished, you know, and said, well, here it is. And she said, that's so beautiful. Then I get an email from her and says, well, could you order me another one of those? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so I said, all right. So, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, um, I, I enjoy doing this kind of faux graining work. I mean, I, I don't do it all the time, but it's something that comes up. And Take a look at those cabinets you were just talking about. Article, but I have a slideshow I'd like to show you all. Uh, it's only a few minutes. If, if we could... Um, Exactly. Kind of gather around here. Did you have to replace any veneer on that? Not, not 
Sancho.